It's called a Palestinian hanging. It's how the North Vietnamese tortured Senator John McCain when he was a POW. It's one of the stress positions sanctioned by Mr. Franklin's memo. What other harsh techniques are sanctioned by Mr. Franklin's memo? The most well-known is waterboarding, where a detainee is held down, a cloth is placed over his face, and water is poured over his mouth and nose to simulate drowning. And who, if anyone besides the US military, has used this interrogation technique? The Spanish Inquisition. And after the Second World War, we convicted Japanese officers of war crimes for waterboarding our POWs. Now, you told us that during your career in the military, you participated in over a 1,000 interrogations. Did you ever use any of these harsh techniques? No, sir. We took down terror networks with tools like respect, rapport, cunning, and deception. Not the techniques in this memo. Besides the fact I have a moral problem with torture, it doesn't work, sir. In fact, it works against us. It's hypocritical to defend our values with torture. That hypocrisy is the best recruiting tool you can give to the terrorists. Thank you. I want to be clear, Mr. Gardner. If you had a terrorist who you believed had information about a dirty bomb set to go off in this city within 24 hours, you wouldn't avail yourself of every possible technique to extract information from him? A man in severe pain or mental anguish will say anything to make it stop. If you only have 24 hours, the last thing you want to do is waste time chasing down false leads. Torture just doesn't work. No one here is advocating torture, Mr. Gardner. We're talking about harsh techniques. I know what we're talking about, sir. I don't need a memo to tell me what torture is. Information is perhaps the most critical weapon for defeating the terrorist threat. Our success rests on our ability to extract that information. I was asked to advise the Defense Department as to the legal standards governing the interrogation of terror suspects. I put my findings in a memo and sent it on to the relevant parties. Thank you. Mr. Franklin, isn't it fair to characterize the legal standards you set governing the interrogations of suspects as anything goes, so long as the president orders it, and in his capacity as commander-in-chief in a time of war, he has the authority to issue any order he deems appropriate? Well, the president can't break the law. Well, according to your memo, what law is the president bound by in the war on terror? The Geneva and Hague Conventions? Not applicable because terrorist detainees are illegal combatants. With the due process clause of the Fifth Amendment? Not applicable to alien enemy combatants held abroad. The Eighth Amendment ban on cruel and unusual punishment? Not applicable because harsh interrogations are not punishment. So you are saying in war the president is bound by no laws? Yes, in war. So if he deems he's got to torture somebody, for example, by crushing the testicles of that person's child, your memo says there is no law, no treaty that can stop him. Well, it would depend on why the president thinks he needs to do that. <clears throat> now, your memo justifies these actions because the detainees are not regular soldiers in a national army as we understand it, correct? Correct. Unlawful enemy combatants are not entitled to the usual protections. Is it too much to assume they'd be protected by our own sense of decency? That's not the task I was given, Mr. Cutter. My memo addressed legal, not ethical standards. Now, your memo says that historically, nations and their sovereigns have been free to treat unlawful combatants as they wish. Could you please give us such a historical example? Well, off the top of my head. What about this example? The summary execution of a Viet Cong guerrilla by a South Vietnamese general. Or this. The torture and murder of Polish resistance fighters by the German army. Is this the historical right you say the president should avail himself of? I didn't invent the right of sovereigns, Mr. Cutter. I simply defined it. 